Hello, and welcome to our Story of Virginia exhibit. In this portion of the gallery, we focus on key objects and figures in the fight for women's suffrage here in Virginia. At the turn of the 20th century, women in Virginia and in many places across the country still lacked a basic right of citizenship, the vote. Suffrage was sweeping the West, and in 1896, states like Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, and Idaho had all written in state amendments to allow for women's suffrage. But in Virginia, traditional gender roles, values, and opposition from local governments meant that pro-suffrage organizations were slow to get started. However, by 1909, that tide of sentiment was slowly shifting, and women like Ellen Glasgow, Adele Clark, Nora Houston, and Lila Mead Valentine started the Equal Suffrage League of Virginia. The Equal Suffrage League of Virginia, like its national counterparts, placed charismatic, well-connected women at the forefront of their campaign for the right to vote. This often meant that the women representing these organizations were wealthy and white. And indeed, race became a divisive issue within the suffrage movement as a whole and within organizations like the Equal Suffrage League specifically. Now, places uh, and organizations like the Equal Suffrage League used propaganda like sashes, uh, banners, and buttons to promote their Votes for Women campaigns. But anti-suffrage groups also used propaganda to make their points. And we will be looking at one of those anti-suffrage postcards today. You can see in the case beside me a postcard entitled, I'd Rather Kiss Her Than Hear Her Talk. And it shows a small girl quite literally standing on a soapbox in front of a misspelled Votes for Women sign. A young boy looks on as she speaks. The point of this postcard is pretty easy to understand. It is basically saying that women were not smart enough to even spell. How could they be smart enough to vote? Other anti-suffrage postcards uh, followed along these same lines of thinking. They showed abandoned households, abandoned children, and exhausted husbands forced to do household chores. These propaganda and lines of thinking basically showed that a lot of anti-suffragists thought women should remain in the domestic and the romantic spheres, not the political ones. Now, in 1920, the United States nationally ratified the 19th Amendment, which meant that women nationwide had the right to vote. The state constitution of Virginia did not ratify the 19th Amendment until over 30 years later, but it didn't matter. The federal ratification of the 19th Amendment meant that women in Virginia and every other state had the right to vote. This marked the single largest enfranchisement of voters in the history of the United States and ushered in a new age of civic activism for women.